MailChimp reports are incredibly powerful and best of all, very easy to understand. They tell us where we're going well with our various campaigns and where we can improve. So let's look at these. If I click on reports in MailChimp, I go obviously to my reporting section. I can see reports for the campaigns I've sent, the email campaigns, for example. Comparative reports is a MailChimp Pro feature, which I, which I cover a bit later. Automation, we've looked at. Um, this will give us a report on how our automation is going. Our landing pages, how our landing page is doing. If we send postcards, uh, we can track how our postcards are going, where they are in the printing cycle, although MailChimp do print very quickly. For our Facebook ads and, our, and Facebook and Instagram ads, for example, we can see various information, sorry, such as you can see on my screen at the moment, such as how many people were reached, uh, how many clicks there were, and so on, and very similar for Google remarketing ads. But let's go back into MailChimp. And let's go into a, a, sorry, a campaign report. So I'm going to click View Report next to the campaign I want to view, and I'll go through the report to explain what we're looking at. The first thing to say is that wherever there's um, a blue, uh, blue, it means it's a link. So we can click on it to, to view more. So various uh, menu items up the top. On the overview page, we can obviously see who we sent to and various other information. We can download the report. We can um, very, uh, very simply share the reports, uh, send an email to someone saying view the report and so on. So that's really handy. If you have e-commerce enabled, we can see how much money we made, for example, from this email, from this email campaign. Open rate, look, this was just a demo, so don't worry about the 100%. Open rate and click rate. Those are our two massive measures, our two most important measures probably in email marketing. And open uh, is where someone, where it's been reported back to MailChimp that the email has been opened by the uh, recipient. And we assume that they've read it if they've opened it. This is not 100% accurate, maybe it's 90, 80, 90% accurate, the open rate, because it all depends on how the recipient server reports an open to MailChimp. For example, some email readers use preview panes, and some of those readers that use a preview pane report an open in a preview as an open, where it might not have been read by a person. A click rate is uh, the proportion of uh, the recipients that have clicked or tapped a link in your email. We can obviously see, see the list average for both clicks and opens and MailChimp provides industry averages um, for the open rate and click rate. Everyone says, <laughs> what, what is a good open and click rate? And honestly, it, it varies in your industry. Uh, it varies on your industry, on how many people you have in your list and so on. It really does. Um, you know, if I was looking at e-commerce, maybe most customers as a very, very broad benchmark, uh, you'd be looking at maybe trying to get an open rate of about 18% at first and then trying to prove that to, um, uh, 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 to 20% and so on. For charities, governments, hobbies, interest groups, uh, you'd want a higher open rate. Um, but again, it's more important to just keep improving. Things that influence the open rate are subject lines, people actually wanting to get things from you, having agreed to get your information, recognizing who you are, and even on your past content, have they received things that are of value in the past? So one of the very first videos I, I did in the series, I mentioned that uh, we can't keep sending every single day uh, sale emails, buy this email, buy, uh, sorry, buy this product, buy that product, etc. It's just too boring. We need to add maybe interest, mix up the message, add value to the consumer, and that relates into an open rate, into higher open rates to adding value for the person reading your your campaigns. Click rate, look, if you do not have any um, links or button or anything in your email, you're not going to have a click rate. Also, if people aren't interested in your content, they're not going to click it. So, um, the click rate is very dependent on having a nice header, having a nice format, something people can understand if you have an image, meaningful images, and content people want to click to read more. So remember, we send people somewhere else. We give them a teaser in the email campaign, and then we send them somewhere else to read more. Click rates, we typically, um, and this again is, is, is very, very broad, but we'd be looking, we, we'd want 
let's say a minimum of a 20% click rate of our open rate. That does differ, but for example, if we have an open rate of 20%, we'd really be wanting a click rate of about 2% or better. We could click at any time to see how many people opened or 19 opened and who those people were. Who clicked? Two people clicked, bounced and unsubscribed. Yes, people unsubscribe. A lot of people don't like the unsubscribes, of course, but it's it's normal and it's natural and what it's what happens in email marketing. Let me click on bounce just to explain this a little bit. So I'm clicking on bounced. And it takes me to the bounced section of the report. This is just a demo, so a very, very small amount of information. How many bounces we had? So a bounce is a non-delivery. Soft bounce and hard bounce. Let me explain this. A hard bounce is MailChimp sends an email to the email address you've added to your list. And it comes back to MailChimp as undeliverable. It can't be delivered to the end person. Maybe the spelling was wrong. Maybe they've changed their name. Maybe they've left their job. Something like that. So a hard bounce immediately shows up as a status of cleaned in your list. And we cannot send email marketing to that person again, that email address again. A soft bounce is a temporary issue. Maybe the person's mailbox is full, um, their mailbox is down very temporarily. MailChimp sends the email, can't deliver it because of a soft bounce, and keeps trying for anywhere between the next five and 15 um, campaigns, depending on the history of that particular person. If after however many times MailChimp can't get the next few campaigns through to that person that you send to them, it marks them as a hard bounce and cleaned in the list. So we can't resend to cleaned, uh, sorry, to hard bounce people because they cleaned in our list or soft bounce people that become hard bounced. So, so the list is very much self-managing in that way. And we can see who hard bounced. So if you really want to, you could also, uh, um, assuming we, we, you know, you, you have the permissions and so on, you could call them and say, um, you know, have you changed your email address and add them as a new subscriber, for example. So going back to the overview, we've done this bit, we've looked at this, okay. Successful deliveries, um, sometimes certain emails can't get through, like one of the emails I added to my list, one of the email addresses actually wasn't valid, so that couldn't get through. Various other information here, clicks per unique opens. Uh, this is what I was saying earlier, We we when I mentioned about what our click rate um, should be we want it to be roughly 10% or, or better better the number of uh, people that are opening our email that are actually clicking it abuse reports is incredibly important I covered this in one of the first videos of the series when dealing with spam and I mentioned how uh, bad it is for domain reputation and deliverability if our emails are marked as spam so we do not want to send to people that have not explicitly agreed to get our information and we also want to send valuable information when people mark us as junk or spam i receive an email from you i manually mark it as junk or spam it's fed back to mailchimp and and all over the place and it affects your delivery rates um, it's it's not a good sign at all you can see who marked you as uh, as a spammer or, or marked as junk by going to activity and complained but typically as a rough guide, we want to keep our abuse reports, in other words, people manually marking us as a spammer, below 0.1%, so one out of a thousand. Predicted demographics some of us will have. Are people male, female? What are their age groups, etc.? 24 hour performance, and this leads into the email marketing section when I mentioned that uh, people open the emails within an hour of receiving them. And I know that, we know that because we have the 24-hour performance and we can see that just after sending, people open their emails. That's very typical. Top links, I will go into this more in a short while. The subscribers with most opens, this can get very, very interesting. People often say to me, you know, Gary, um, I've got people that have opened 30 times, 100 times. Do they love my content this much? It's possible, but probably unlikely. What we can often infer from this, and these numbers are very rough again, but what I say to people is whenever 
you have people that are opening more than about 10 times. It's probable, possible or probable, they have forwarded that email to another person. So when you send me an email from MailChimp, for example, there's a unique tracking link on that. If I then forward it to someone else and they open it, it still counts as me as the original recipient. So this is why some people have large opens. So these are, um, these are people that are sharing your content. You're often going to see your competitors here, and that's fine. But you're also going to see customers that are engaged with your brand. Um, so again, you know, a lot of my clients will, will get on the phone to people that maybe are over 10 or so, uh, assuming they have uh, permission to phone them, and say to them, look, you know, can you give us the email addresses or, 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 or names, or can you get, you know, help us get permission from those people or introduce us to those people. Social performance, who's liked, who's tweeted your email and so on, and top locations by open, where have they opened uh, your emails? Okay, just going up to the top of the screen again. We could click on activity and we could see more detailed information and export that information for who opened, when they opened, etc., etc. Links is hugely valuable. Hugely, hugely, hugely valuable. We can see various information regarding the, the clicks here. Of well, I think the best thing of all is click map. So on the click map we see, and it's sometimes called something similar to a heat map. So on the click map we can see the campaign we sent, we can see where there are links, and best of all, we can see the proportion of clicks for each link, and if we hover over, the total number of clicks. So when I was demonstrating what makes for a good email designed campaign and so on, the reason why so many companies, Uber, Disney, Adobe, etc., use very, very similar layout, uh, minimal content, is because they know it works. They've looked at these and they know that if you have a nice, big, bright button, people click on it. We know we don't have to have everything in one email because unfortunately, otherwise, we can't see where people are clicking. So very typically, and it's not always the case, but typically, if you have more clicks near the bottom of an email, it probably means your orders and your orders wrong. Whatever was at the bottom should be near the top because a lot of people do not scroll down. So we would expect to to have your number one item that people click on near the top. And this is why, when I said earlier, we need to have our number one seller or piece of information at the top. It's really important because a lot of people do not scroll. So hugely, hugely beneficial. This is just a report then under links click map. Again, we could go into more detail about who actually um, who shared our campaign and so on. If we have e-commerce enabled, we can see what sales we've made from this, this email campaign. Conversations I mentioned in, um, in the email campaign lesson that or one of the lessons that in, under the settings we can enable conversations, in which case MailChimp filters out uh, out of office replies, most out of office replies, for example, but also keeps a record in MailChimp of that to and from email conversation. So we'd be able to see that here. If you have Google Analytics enabled, you'll be able to see some of the information here. And we can also see which domains we most often send to. And this can get interesting, particularly when I work with some large companies. Um, we can often see that they maybe they send mostly to government departments or to education or whatever that can get interesting anyway so there's a heck of a lot of information going on in these in these reports but let's go back to our report section we've looked at a campaign report comparative i mentioned is a mailchimp pro feature for automation we can go into to um into reports, sorry, for our automation, and we can view the the various data. It's very similar to to the reports we've seen for the campaigns, and we can look at the the reporting for the the automation as a whole, and and for each of the emails themselves in our workflow. And back to reports. Last but not least, for landing pages, we can see various data. 
I'll just click on report. And again, it's that really familiar format, which is great. How many unique visits they were, how many clicks they were, for example, our conversion rate, which is really handy. We can see various information here, and in some ways it's very similar to the campaign reports, so nice and easy to understand. So please, use your reports to learn about where you're going well and where you can improve.